medical professionals have read it. What's the worst frisky-related injury you've seen at your workplace? I used to work weekend night shifts. Had a younger girl come in one weekend. Despite her age, she had a hip replacement and it was dislocated. ER put it back in and away she went. Next weekend, she's back again, same thing. Third weekend in a row and there she is. Finally, I ask her what she's doing to dislocate her hip, and she says her boyfriend keeps bending her leg back too far during banging. I told her to try different positions. Look, if man doesn't learn after the first two times, come on, what are you doing? Be a little more attentive, brother. Story 2. Janitor heated petroleum jelly and injected it into his dong with a syringe. He was trying to make his dong bigger. He added more. Other janitors saw him and decided to do the same. So turns out with nowhere to go, petroleum jelly forms granulomas under the skin, which get infected. Word was the tip of his dong and the base wouldn't get hard anymore, only the middle. And abscesses formed, resulting in what was described as the dong looking like maggots had bored tunnels through it. Janitor 1 was hospitalized for several weeks. As for Janitor 2, he ended up with several ulcerating wounds in his pelvic region. You could stick a finger in them, they were that big. Apparently, injecting your dong with petroleum jelly is fairly common. Some girls have also attempted to inject their breasts to give themselves implants. It has led to deaths because bits and pieces of it can dislodge and travel to the lungs. Don't do it. Is this what they think enlargement surgery is? They just inject petroleum jelly into you? I can't believe one person saw him or heard about him doing it and was like, that is a great idea I've never considered. Let me get in on that. Story 3. Nothing worse than fake dongs, vibes, and other objects stuck where the sun don't shine. One chap did say that he likes sticking things up his butt, and that's fair enough. But the strange excuses are usually the most entertaining part of it. Worst genital injury was a guy who drilled his scrotum with a cordless drill doing DIY. Don't secure your workpiece between your knees if you want to be sure to keep both testes, gentlemen. Story 4. Back in medical school, I was on a surgery rotation with a classmate. Our first day, we got split up into groups. By chance, my first case was an appendectomy. His first case was helping deliver a jewel-encrusted fake dong from the rectum of a 250-pound guy. He was at the business end when it crowned and was responsible for catching as the surgeons pushed from above. Sounds like your friend got shafted here. Am I right? Story 5. A co-worker was getting divorced. One night, his soon-to-be ex called about something and she could tell he was having a bad day. So to cheer him up, she told him all about how while she and her new boyfriend were banging, he shoved a fake dong up her butt and it just got sucked up. After failed attempts to remove it, they went to the ER where she got surgery to remove it. After surgery, doctors sanitized it and returned it to her. This story did not make him feel better. Story 6. Broken Dong Dude's testes were the size of grapefruits. I assume the internal pudendal artery was pumping blood into them from somewhere. Was an MA then, now in med school. Was a neat injury, but nothing we could do for him in urgent care. He needed surgery for sure. Did see a bottle stuck in a rectum x-ray as well. I'm not one to judge, keep on freaking on. But do not put glass in your butt, please. Story 7. Dude stuck a pencil up his dong. Wood is porous. It got stuck for a day. He couldn't pee around it, and initially, that's what his complaint was. Urinary retention. Finally, in the exam room, when the doc asked him what the hell was up with the eraser sticking out of his dong, did the guy fess up. He ended up needing surgery. He was also 70-ish, old enough to know better. Story 8. Typical not a medical professional, but I had a friend who was a hospital pharmacist. He said a patient came in with a coffee thermos in his butt. Cap first. He got the rest of the thermos out, but the cap stayed. After a couple days, he finally decided to go to the hospital because he couldn't get it out. The cap ended up festering bacteria and he had part of his colon removed. Now that guy's in his 30s with a colostomy bag. Story 9. My stepdad is an ER doctor in the hospital in the city I was raised in. There was no place else to go when the frisky swing my idiot boyfriend hung on drywall ceiling came crashing down and I broke my tailbone. He was also there six months later when that same boyfriend let go of my hips as he was going at me pretty hard from behind, sending me over the edge of the bed and head first into a desk. Story 10. Alright, embarrassing story from the patient end here. A few years ago, I was stroking the weasel. I have some neodymia magnets on my desk. Why? I was dismantling old hard drives, that's why. Well, I bumped the desk and sent the magnets flying. Saw in slow motion that they were on a tandem collision course with Mr. Willy and panicked and tried to dodge. I rolled a frickin' one on that check. Two magnets met with my foreskin in between. These were tiny, strong magnets, and I couldn't separate them myself after 10 to 15 minutes of trying. So at 10.30ish at night, I went to my neighbor and said, Hey, uh, I need to go to the hospital. And he said, When? Now? Uh, okay, man. And we got to the ER, and I checked myself in. When I told the nurse what was wrong, he lost it and cracked up. I rolled my eyes and said, yeah, yeah, whatever, just get them apart, okay? Guess who didn't know hemostats were magnetic? Both of us. 
So it took Nurse Chuckles a good ten minutes to uh, secure the tips around the magnets and pull them apart through fumbling and trying his sweetheart's darndest to contain the laughing. He got them apart, I retrieved my magnets, and he had to leave the room and laugh down the hall. Another nurse popped her head in as I was examining the damage. Nothing horrible, just a couple of bruises. But I didn't see her and she gasped and caused me to damn near fall out of the bed. She was embarrassed, I was embarrassed, and she ran. And then, laughs a lot came back, along with security, because apparently the chick thought I was pleasuring myself. That was fun to explain. Security didn't really believe me till Nitro Boy had to confirm it through more laughing. I was finally discharged with now half the hospital staff laughing at me and a referral to the urologist for a checkup. I never did tell my neighbor the truth about that trip. Maybe it's about time I do. What kind of doctors or medical professionals laugh at stuff like that? Like, I don't know, I'm not really buying that part of the story to be honest. Medical professionals tend to be pretty, well, professional about stuff like this. It happens and most of the time they don't really care why it did. I don't know what OP did to make them laugh at him so much, but I don't know. Story 11. My family is constantly in and out of our local ER. Last time I went in there for a concussion, there was a man in there with his wife for heart palpitations during coitus. He started having a slow heart attack while they were banging and they ended up admitting him. There was also a girl in there as high as the frickin' sun claiming she'd banged with multiple different guys, like three or six and gotten pregnant from all of them, but that her friends had kidnapped her afterward to San Diego and given her a peculiar brownie with pot in it and she didn't know it was pot. And the pot brownie now made her lose her baby and now she was dying. According to the conversation the doctors kept having with her, she would come in three times a month claiming she was pregnant and worried about her baby. Each time they tested and all tests proved negative. She started her period and it caused her to insist she had lost the multiple men's baby, and that the pot brownie in San Diego was at fault three days before. She started wailing when they gave her meds to calm down, claiming that they were unaliving her baby with pot and injections, saying that she would call up her friends who kidnapped her and forced her to eat this deadly pot brownie as proof. I'm not sure what ended up happening to her and her apparent psychotic break, but I'm hoping they got her some help because she was clearly out of it. Story 12. Worked at a physical therapy clinic for years. 78-year-old man herniated a disc in his neck, going down on his girlfriend. He was a longtime patient and friend of the therapist, so we got the whole story. Our patient was old, rich and single, and loved all the sleazy bits that came with it. One day, his 39-year-old girlfriend asked him to return a favor. So patient goes down on a woman for the first time ever at age 78. Not really knowing what he was doing, he went at her like a dog drinking water, his words. A few moments later, he felt a pop and his arm went numb. He came to us with a nearly useless left arm after about two days. My boss was laughing so hard during the eval that I went into the treatment room to check on him. Patient insisted I stay and hear the whole story. He actually died a couple months later from something unrelated. I miss that crusty old bastard a lot. Story 13. Was working in ER rotation at a major DC hospital while getting my EMT. I wasn't around at the onset, but a gentleman came in complaining about swelling down there, and a nurse gave a cursory look. She immediately took him to a private room, closed the door, and came over to tell us what was going on. The guy apparently liked the feeling of weight on his balls when he got off, so he had put his dong and balls through the center of a five-pound weight plate, like you would put on free weights, and gotten off. He then fell asleep, and five hours later he woke up swollen and unable to pull himself out of the weight. He had somehow taken public transportation or walked with a five pound weight plate in his pants all the way to the hospital. We spent the next 30 minutes trying to reduce the swelling by putting crushed ice up against him without success. Finally, the charge nurse called DCFEMS to get assistance from the heavy rescue squad to cut through the plate. We took the guy into the psych room, closed the door, and proceeded to cut it off. It being the weight, not his manhood the entire time having to keep applying more ice to the plate so that it didn't become hot enough just to cauterize his groin. The other patients really didn't appreciate hearing a buzzsaw, screaming, and seeing all of the ER staff giggling. Of course, the poor guy also had to deal with a constant stream of doctors, nurses, techs having to go in there to check on something and see what it was all about. Story 14. I'm not a medical professional but worked as a physician scribe in an emergency room for a year, and here is my best slash worst. We had a patient come in one night around 2.30 or so, our favorite time since bars close at 2. Charts say 58-year-old male with his chief complaint is a foreign body. Okay, cool, I'm thinking maybe a bar fight where me being a student gets to see something awesome up close. Go into the room with the physician and it's a guy in an all-khaki trench coat. I imagined that was it. The day I died from a terrorist. 
not during my deployment to Iraq, but in a frickin' hospital by an old dude. We ask him to have a seat on the bed, and he says he can't. Yes, this is heading where you think. In talking, he says he has one inside of him. When we ask him one what, he opens the coat and pulls out a large bottle of natural ice beer. The brown bottle. It's as big as a goddamn one liter of coke. Glass. The doc asks which end he inserted first, and of course it was the bottleneck first. So once he got it deep enough, schwump, and his colon said mine. Nothing like having to go to emergency surgery in fear of a glass bottle being crushed by your colon. Aside from that, my runner-up was a 17-year-old male with an iPhone up his butt. 17, man. If you're into butt stuff, just use toys and do so with care to not push the limits, please. Story 15. So, way back in medical school, all of us had to do a two-month rotation in OBGYN. This rotation was split up into a few weeks of labor ward and a couple weeks of the OBGYN ER. Our major county hospital had a small, separate ER just for pregnant women and those with purely gynecologic complaints to relieve some pressure off the medical and surgical ERs. So I'm sitting there in the OBGYN ER with the residents one night, and at about 2 a.m. we get an ambulance crew bringing in a youngish woman who is absolutely howling in pain. The residents go to examine her and tell me to get a quick report from the EMTs, who had already talked to both the woman and her boyfriend, who they said was not coming to the ER because he was busy talking to the police. Per the EMTs, the woman and her boyfriend had just been at her house to hook up. They had just finished their business and, as folks are wont to do, decided to light up a crack pipe to share while sitting naked on their couch. The boyfriend apparently went out to his car to grab something and inadvertently bumped the headlights switch. This causes the lights to flash, which the woman apparently interpreted as the cops are coming. So she shoved the lit crack pipe into her kitty. Obviously, this was excruciatingly painful, causing her to tense up and start flailing trying to get it out, which then causes part of it to shatter. So now she has hot, broken glass in her kitty. I don't have a kitty personally, but the story made my imaginary kitty hurt. Yeah, that's... Ooh, no, that doesn't... No, 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 don't do that. Story 16. Had a drunk gentleman come in one time with an empty bottle of dish detergent. Empty, except for his massive dong, that is. Not a normal dong, oh no. This was an entrapped, blood gets in but not out, swollen dong, of genuinely horrifying proportions. Dude was as big as an eggplant and just as purple. Anyhow, his drunken self had gotten frisky and decided the detergent bottle was good enough and it got stuck. Now, being a resourceful man, he decided to MacGyver his way out. So he cut the bottle widthwise, giving himself a big ol' satellite dish. A literal cone of shame. This didn't seem to help. So he tried lubing himself up. Not having any lube on hand, he elected for... ketchup. This didn't work. He tried repeatedly over the next, and I need to stress this, 16 hours to get it off himself without success. So here I am trying to decide what in the blue Sam hell to do with this dude's dusky AF member. I can't cut the bottle off. It'd be easy, but for all I knew, the dong was dead, having been effectively tourniqueted off for 16 hours. And all that would accomplish is pumping necrotic dong tissue straight to his heart, lungs, and the rest of his body. We ended up calling a urologist who used ultrasound to determine whether there was any blood flow at all, as he may need to amputate. Luckily there was, so he didn't. What he did do, however, is break out a big ol' needle to deflate the dude's baby arm-sized meatus. This served two purposes. To drain the blood and reduce the size of his dongle to cut the bottle off, and to teach him to never do that crap again. Don't stick your dong in bottles. Story 17. Not a medical professional, but I managed to break my nose during banging one time. So my girlfriend and I are going at it on the floor of our living room, me on bottom. And I guess we had slid further and further under the coffee table without realizing it. Anyway, I finished and my head shot up, smashing my nose right into the edge of the table. After I got realigned, splinted, and healed, we thought it was hilarious. During the healing, though, not so much. Story 18. Young girl brought in by ambulance with some kitty bleeding and hypovolemic shock. Apparently, boyfriend tore her kitty open during rough banging. Couldn't get many details about what really happened, so we had to guesstimate the extent of her injury and spent time getting tests. Well, it was a laceration along one side of her kitty with severed artery, which caused bleeding into tissue surrounding her kitty and uterus, leading to a huge hematoma in the soft tissue and pelvic cavity. When boyfriend came into the ER, he had a smirk because he thought he banged so good his girlfriend passed out. But when we gave him the news, he looked like he would probably pass out right then and there too. What is this obsession with the dudes and hurting their partners during banging? Like, to some extent, 
it seems to be a turn on for a lot of guys to be like, yeah, she, it hurt when we did it. That's so good. I don't know. It doesn't seem like a flex to me. Sounds like you're doing it wrong. Like, sure, your, uh, your equipment might be huge, but there's still ways to do it without causing pain to your partner. Unless they're into that, because if they are, then more power to you. But if they're not, eh, why hold it as like a trophy? It's weird to me. Story 19. An older gentleman decided to take a large diameter, about 9 or 10 millimeters, plastic tine from a rake and put it up his dong. Well, it got stuck. He decided the best way to remove it was to tie an iPhone charger around the end and yank it out, and he managed to perforate his bladder in the process. Stupidly, I asked why he did this. He said, It's something called sounding, and I do it all the time. Well, this time it ended with him having surgery to stitch his bladder back together. Or, I had a younger gentleman claim that he fell down the stairs and tore his scrotum. Let me just say he straight up eviscerated his scrotum. Essentially, his testes were outside of it. We stitched it back together and told him to keep the site clean and protected. Well, two days later, he came back wearing silver bracelets and anklets. When we inspected the procedure site, it was so infected that his scrotum had to be removed in surgery. First one, horrifying, don't even want to think of it. Second one, what's the importance of the silver bracelets and anklets? I feel like I'm missing something here. It sounds horrible, but I don't really get what happened. That being said, though, this is the end of this one. It was a mildly horrifying one to read, I'm not gonna lie. There was a lot of stuff that I just don't even want to imagine. But here we are. Either way, though, I hope you enjoyed the video, whatever that means for you. And I also hope you have a wonderful day or night. And I will see you in the next one.